All right, so today we're going to look at some async await node stuff. And any of this async await stuff applies to any browser application that supports async await, which is a lot of them, or if you transpile with Babel or something like that. Uh, so today we're going to write just a small little GitHub API that just goes over a couple of ways to use each loops with async await. So before we get started, I'm going to need a, I'm going to want the request library so that I can make calls. So I'm going to, uh, npm install uh, request, if I can spell it right, there we go. And then because request is not asynchronous, as in doesn't return promises, um, we need that. So I'm actually going to install an uh, extra utility that I highly recommend for any async await stuff called request promise. It just wraps a uh, request. So npm install request promise, and then we'll have that. And if you see over here, I'm just working in sort of a really empty folder with just those two things. That's all we've got. So let's start off. So const request equals require uh, request promise. Okay, there we go. So we're going to work with the GitHub API. And upon reading the docs, really, it's pretty simple. Uh, we're just going to make a quick API call to my GitHub and just take a look at a couple things. Really. Uh, we're just going to do that to just have an API call. So we're just going to say const endpoint equals, and this is just uh, api.github.com slash users. And then we'll we'll tack on something after that. And not double quotes. We use single quotes for strings. Okay. Uh, the last thing that we need before we get started, let's see. Um, when I make these async await script files. I'm, gonna, I'm calling this a script file. This is a, a file we'll just hit and it'll run. Um, I like to start them all off in an async await manner. And so I start them all off with an async function like this. Um, but this, we need this to run. Um, and I like to call this function main. Just, you know, I know it's sort of a callback to old programming, but I like to say, like, here's our, here's where our main body of our script is going to be. Again, this is sort of like a, a script that we'll just hit. Um, but this doesn't work. You actually have to wrap this whole thing in parens to make this a single declaration, and then you have to call it with parens. And so this will run now in an async await way right from here. So I'll just do console.log here just so you can see that that actually will run. So from here, we'll just say um, node index. And there you go. So it works. Obviously, there's no async await going on here, but this is just sort of the starting ground. And really, that's this is not exactly the starting ground. Uh, boiler, boilerplate. There's one more little addition, which is uh, I like to wrap the whole thing in a try catch. Uh, Console.log uh, e, and in our case, it's going to be e dot message. You'll see why later. I'm just saving me a step. Um, but yeah. So then here I say, you know main script code here. So this this body right here, this I have this a lot everywhere. This is like my main sort of way I'm going to start writing a script in Node to do anything. So it's good to just sort of have a basis for that. And this is where we start. Let me get rid of that comment. OK, so let's make a quick API call to GitHub and see what happens. So we're just going to say request.get and Let's just, well, we have the endpoint. So let's just say we can use backticks so that we can uh, append a variable. So we're just going to say um, uh, dollar sign bracket endpoint slash uh, optical effects. Optical effects. And this is async await, so we actually need to await that now. And we can say const res for result equals that. And let's just console.log res. And let's just see where we're at with this. So this is just making a simple request to the GitHub API, nothing special. And we get an error, uh, request forbidden by administrative rules. Please make sure your request has a user agent. So GitHub won't allow us to make a call this way. So we actually need a user agent. So we'll just bring in mine as a variable, UA. And so we have to use request slightly differently. Uh, let's get rid of all this. We actually have to say uh, request, pass it a thing. URL equals, and then here, same thing, we can just say, again, variable, endpoint, slash, optical effects. But then we need headers, and then we want the user agent, so uh, that is 
caps user agent colon and then UA. Uh, and then we want to, we, it'll be default, but we want to say that the method that we're going to use is get. We're making a get call. So a little bit more complicated here, but we're making a get call, we're making a get call to this place, passing it this header, uh, and then let's see what happens. Let's see if uh, GitHub's cool with that. And they are. There we go. So here is all of my GitHub creds that are public. And there you go. So that's calling the GitHub API, the public one, without authentication. So pretty simple. Uh, so to do this in a loop, let's get a couple URLs together that we want. So we want to make three API calls that we're going to do. So I've just got a quick array here of endpoints. So I just got endpoint for my user, endpoint for my repos, and endpoint for the subscription. So we just got a little array here of URLs. So we're going to look at three different kinds of loopage. Um, one of them is going to be wrong. So the one I'm about to write now is, is going to be wrong in a special way, OK? I'll just say that just so to preemptively know what's going to happen here. So our goal is going to be we're going to say uh, loop over and call all the endpoints and then notif or, and then like do something else when we're done, OK? That's our goal is going to be loop over and call the endpoints and then do something when we're finished with those, okay? So let's start off with a really naive way of doing this and just use a nice for each. So we're just going to say urls dot for each url, boom, we're going to use fat arrow syntax because my hands at this point are used to writing it. There's really no necessarily reason to do it. We don't need scope here, but I'm doing it anyway because I'm used to it. Um, cool. So url, there we go. We will put this business inside of here. Um, and cool. If I'm going to run this, this is going to throw an error. I'll explain the error in a second. This says unexpected identifier, uh, await request. You cannot use await inside of a function that does not have a sync. So this, even though I'm, it doesn't say the word function here because of the fat error syntax, this is a function and I can't use await inside of a non-asynchronous function. The fact that this is asynchronous out here has nothing to do with the fact that this function isn't async. So we need async. Okay? So that, in theory, fixes the issue. Um, and we need to have a log afterwards. It's a console.log uh, done the loop. Okay? Now, obviously, this is not really using a URL, so let's just let's get rid of this. We actually, because of, again, more ES6, well, we don't have to write URL colon URL, since they're the same word. We can just delete this part. Thank you, ES6, and make that nice and simple. So we're going to make three requests here. Um, I'm going to, for logging, I'm going to say console.log done, and then the URL, just so we can sort of see when we're finished with that one. We actually don't really care about the result. Um, one more thing to note here. If there is an error, actually, let's let's run it. Let's see what error it throws me first. So it actually didn't throw an error like I thought it would. So let me go ahead and explain this, uh, where this is going, uh, where, what's going on here. Um, anytime you have a function like this, you still want to have another try catch inside of that function because um, the error won't bubble out. So if this were to throw an error, like let's say I don't have this and throw that same error before, node is throwing a unhandled promise rejection error because this is throwing an error, but because we're in this function body, it's not actually getting caught by this try catch. So the try catch in this situation is local to the function. So I'm going to put that back. What we need is another try catch inside of this loop. Okay, so let's do that so that we can write good code and catch our errors appropriately. So I've done that now. So now, if there's an error, which there won't be at this point, it'll be caught just fine. Um, let's take a look at the output. So the first thing that we see is it says, done the loop. Now, don't forget, that's all the way down here after the loop. But that was the first thing that logged out. Then we have our three calls, which are nicely in order. Now, obviously, this is wrong. Why is it doing this? Well, the, the way this is happening is that just because these are synchronous, these functions are getting declared, boom, 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 and then it moves on. There is nothing stopping this function. There's nothing awaiting inside of this function. So this function will not wait. 
these three functions get defined and then it moves on. Now those will run, but we can't guarantee any order. We, we absolutely can't have the order because um, there's nothing in this function. There's no way to await this kind of thing. There's packages that let you do that, but there, there's no awaiting this particular block of code. So this function here, this is all gonna have to sit here, get executed, and we're not gonna know when it's finished. So this is the naive way to do it. You wanna kind of avoid doing this particular kind of thing, even though this is seemingly the easy thing. So the quick fix, if you want the iterations to happen one after another, as in you don't want them to be all called at once, what you wanna do is replace your for each with a standard for loop, okay? So here, we're actually gonna say for let i equals zero, i is less than uh, urls.length, i plus plus, and then const url equals urls i, and then the ending, we don't need these parentheses of the semicolon. So now, we have not made a new function at this point. Now we're still in this function. Just because we have a for loop, we're still in this function. We actually no longer need this try catch because the, the other try catch is going to be just fine because it's within the same function context. We're still, oops, we're still all in the same context at this point. So we don't need that extra try catch. We have a for loop that works perfectly fine. This await is inside of the, is there for this async. And so this should work just fine and execute the calls one after another. Boom, 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 and loop. There we go. So we got one, we got the other, and then that, and then done the loop. So there you go. This is one way you can remedy the situation using a regular for loop. Now, what happens when we don't want these requests to be one after another? Uh, a common way to handle a scenario where we want all of the requests to happen all at the same time is using a technique called promise.all map. Okay, or I don't know what it's called that, but it's basically promise.all. It takes an array of promises, okay? Um, and it's like promise one, promise two, promise three, right? That's sort of what it's gonna look like. And then you can await this entire thing so we know when the whole thing is over, okay? So, and it'll run all three of these all at the same time, okay? So let's delete that. Um, so, what is this going to look like? So let me sort of write out what this might look like when we're done. Um, so actually, let's put that back. So await promise.all takes an array of things. Okay. So our promises that we care about are these requests, right? So we'll say we got one of those, we got two of those, and we have three of those. So this is sort of, this is sort of the format we're going to be forming. And we want all three of these to go all at once, which is how promise.all works. And when the whole thing is done, we can await the whole thing and we'll know when it's done. So let's put this back to a for each loop because it's most similar to what we're gonna be doing. So we had for each, uh, nope, uh, urls dot for each function url, boom, boom, get rid of that, add a paren, boom. Okay, so this is what we had before. And what we wanna do, instead of for each, because we don't just wanna loop over them, we need to create the array of promises. Um, right now, to create an array of promises, we can use the map function. So again, if you're not familiar, the map function basically iterates over an array and returns something of each part of the array, okay? So what is our array starting out as? Our array is starting out as an array of three strings, and we are going to return three promises instead of three strings, okay? So we're basically gonna transform the array of three strings into an array of three promises. So we're going to map, which is just looping over, each one of these strings, which is the URL, and we're gonna be returning, um, we're gonna be returning the, uh, not a wait, we just wanna return the raw promise itself, okay? So we're gonna map over each of one and we're gonna return the raw promise, okay, out of each one, okay? And then, like we did in our little quick example, we can use promise.all to know when all promises are done. Because what this is gonna end up with is instead of an array of strings, we can say array of promises equals this. So we have an array of promises now. 
and we can say await uh, promise dot all array of promises, and then this will know when we're done. Okay, so this is sort of one way to do that. Um, a more succinct way to do that is to put the await promise dot all right in the line here and not sort of store it as a variable like this. And then we have to add an extra parenthesis at the bottom here. And normally, in this case, you probably wouldn't do the log here. You would probably just return right from here. But just for purposes of the video, I want to log to show you what's going to happen so you can see all these sort of fire at once. So all these are going to fire at once. And then when the whole thing is done, we're going to go here. So let's test that out for a second. And there you go. So you can see that all of these fired all at the same time in no particular order. Uh, they, they would finish whenever they finished. If they finished out of order, that's fine. Um, and then you can see done the loop. Okay. So this is, a, again, a common pattern to get used to, await promise dot all and then map. And then you sort of loop over everything. And as long as everything resolves inside of each of the promises, this whole thing will finish when they're done. And then you can move on and write more code later on. Okay. And again, the way that I would normally write this is that this is the succinct way to do this. So here you go. This is your standard pattern for this. And then when we're done, we can move on here. Uh, one thing I forgot to show is how to get the result of a promise.all map. Um, it's You get a result for each of the arrays that you passed in in that order. So if I do uh, const res for, let's just say result equals that. Um, after this is all done, I can say like, so I can say, let's keep our log here, done the loop. I can say uh, console.log um, res1 is going to be result 0 and console.log uh, you know, res2 is going to be result 1, your normal index stuff. So that's sort of how you can get that. Um, let's take a look at that. There you go. Uh, maybe a fancier way to do this is to destructure the array of results if you happen to know the order. So I can say um, profile, uh, repos, and subs equals that. And so then I can actually say res1 is actually um, profile, and res2 is actually uh, repos. So this is sort of a really uh, ES6 y way of handling a thing. And so you can see same result over here. But uh, you can destructure the array of results in the order of which they, get, they are given in the map. So that's how you get the results out of doing a promise.all await.